Hi, this is Kieran, your DeFi guide. In today's special edition of the EY Blockchain Summit, I'll be giving you a brief overview of the decentralized finance space, the exponential growth it has been experiencing, as well as what kind of challenges the Ethereum blockchain is facing due to this growth. And we'll also be looking at some um, solutions such as layer two scaling, opportunities as well as the highly awaited ethereum 2.0 serenity upgrade with that said i hope you enjoy this video decentralized finance applications are smart contracts that are running on ethereum blockchain they're completely decentralized that means that the users can interact with these um, smart contracts without intermediaries and it's very interesting because many of these decentralized finance protocols are interoperable because that's the core philosophy behind the DeFi space. They can work together and you can imagine these DeFi protocols like Lego bricks, you can put them together and create completely new financial instruments like flash loans, lending and borrowing, and a lot more. So this DeFi space is growing at an incredibly fast pace. So here's an overview of some of the big players in the decentralized finance space and many of them are in Zug, Switzerland or other locations in many different sectors. So you've got legacy finance, bridges and facilitators. You've got um, consumer DeFi apps, wallets, data provider, research. You've got staking and infrastructure, which is definitely very important for Ethereum 2.0. Oracles to bring real world data to smart contracts. And you've also got the privacy transaction uh, DeFi apps. You've got interoperability, which allows or uh, the communication between different blockchains. And last but not least, you've got store of value such as Bitcoin, which uh, is used with wrapped Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. With so many applications now already being developed and many more being developed right now, uh, it's no wonder that a lot of users have been drawing to the space. Here we can see the amount of DeFi users over time. And this chart is exponential um, to say the least. So at the beginning of the year, the average was around 8,481 users and currently it's at 695,000 users. And I don't see this growth stopping anytime soon because these users um, can benefit a lot from the smart contracts and the DeFi apps that are currently in the DeFi ecosystem. Let's have a look at what kind of impact this massive increase in users has on the Ethereum blockchain. So here we've got the average transaction fee on Ethereum and at its peak, the average transaction fee was $9.17 for an Ethereum transaction, which is definitely very expensive and more expensive than Bitcoin transactions. And this is due to the rising popularity of the DeFi space, people that want to interact with DeFi apps. There are currently two solutions for improving the scalability on the Ethereum blockchain and both are being actively worked upon. So layer two is one way and many companies are working on layer two solutions. And these layer two solutions are basically off chain solutions. We take the complicated computation that happen on the Ethereum blockchain and move them off chain. Now the second improvement which has been worked upon is the Ethereum 2.0 Serenity upgrade. And what that means is basically Ethereum 1.0, which is running on proof of work, will transition to uh, Ethereum blockchain 2.0, which is running on a proof of stake and also have shards, which means that blockchains will be running in parallel. So let's have a look at some of the current layer two scaling solutions that are trying to improve the scalability of the Ethereum blockchain. So you've got zero knowledge rollups, which was proposed by Barry Whitehat in 2018. And it's a layer two scaling solution, which allows for many transactions to be validated by a single on-chain transaction. It allows for a much higher um, TPS throughput on the Ethereum blockchain. Then you have Matic, which was developed in 2017. And the goal is to create an easy and cost efficient way to build and deploy decentralized finance applications thanks to hybrid proof of stake and plasma enabled sidechain. So a lot of buzzwords, but the main goal of Matic is to remedy the issue of high gas fees and slow block confirmation times. 
The next layer to scaling solution is the Perun network, which is an off-chain framework based on state channels that allows for real-time transactions, as well as integrating complex business logic. It will reduce the fees and increase the scalability of any existing blockchain, including the Ethereum blockchain. Then we have Loopring, which is a platform for building non-custodial high throughput or the book based exchanges on the Ethereum blockchain. So it also uses zero knowledge proofs to increase the scalability of the Ethereum blockchain. Last but not least, we've got XDAI Stake, which is a stable payments blockchain, which allows for fast and inexpensive transactions of stable cryptocurrencies. So these were the layer two scaling solutions. Let's have a look at the second scaling solution, which is the transition from Ethereum 1.0, which is running on proof of work, to Ethereum 2.0, which is running on proof of stake. And here are a few of the main characteristics of the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. So the main blockchain will be called the beacon chain. And you have a lot of blockchains which are running in parallel to this beacon chain, 64 blockchains to be exact. And one of these blockchains will then also encompass the Ethereum 1.0 blockchain, which we have right now, to enable a seamless transition from Ethereum 1.0 to Ethereum 2.0. So Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin has an excellent analogy to explain the idea of shards for the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. So you can imagine that Ethereum has been split into thousands of islands, each island doing its own thing. And each of these islands has a unique feature and everyone belonging on that island has accounts and can interact with each other on other islands. And they can also freely use the features of each of these islands. If they want to contact with other islands, they will have to use some sort of a protocol. And that's the idea. You can imagine if all of these people were on the same island, this island would be super congested. It would be slow, it would be um, not so fun to interact with other people, but having thousands of islands um, that will distribute the people among all of these islands, making sure that the transaction fees are low when talking about the Ethereum blockchain. So that might be a lot of information for someone that might still not be familiar with the Ethereum 2.0 transition. So here I'm going to answer a few questions that I've been asked a lot concerning the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade. First of all, what's the difference between Ethereum 1.0 and Ethereum 2.0? Well, there are two main differences. The first one is that the, the Ethereum 1.0 is running on proof of work and Ethereum 2.0 is running on proof of stake. That means that you won't have miners using expensive hardware to mine for new blocks. Anyone can become a validator. That means um, be able to propose new blocks for Ethereum 2.0 with their consumer hardware. The second point that differentiates Ethereum 1.0 and Ethereum 2.0 is the shard chains. These basically these islands that we were talking about, which will increase the scalability of the whole blockchain. Ethereum 1.0 doesn't have these islands. Ethereum 2.0 will have these islands. So what are the main benefits from this Ethereum 2.0 upgrade that will happen to Ethereum? A much higher scalability. So up to 100,000 transactions per second, thanks to the horizontal scalability with the blockchains running in parallel and the use of rollups layer two scaling solutions. So what will happen to the Ethereum 1.0 chain as soon as Ethereum 2.0 has uh, launched? Well, basically Ethereum 1.0 will be added onto one of the shards, onto one of the islands, and it will run there using proof of stake, not using proof of work anymore. When Ethereum 2.0 moves to a proof of stake consensus mechanism, it will allow people to stake their Ether, meaning they can lock up their Ether and become a validator proposing new blocks. Basically the same thing or a similar thing that proof of work miners are doing on the proof of work blockchain, but they have to use expensive hardware and on a proof of stake blockchain, you can use normal retail hardware. Now there are a lot of staking options and uh, retail investors as well as institutional um, investors are interested in many of these options because the rewards that they can earn are pretty high. So the three main options uh, someone has to stake on a new Ethereum 2.0 blockchain will be either to run their own validator, which has its own pros and cons. So first of all, uh, the main pro would be a much higher return on investment per year. 
it's non-custodial that means you have full ownership of the private keys and you will be contributing to a higher decentralization of the network now there are definitely some downsides to becoming your own validator you will have to lock up 32 ETH per validator which is a substantial amount of money and this ETH will also be locked up for two years until phase two of the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade has happened now you've got centralized staking services many centralized exchanges will probably offer these uh, these staking services soon examples of those are consensus binance stakefish the pros you will probably be able to stake with a very low amount of eth starting with maybe 0.1 eth um, that reduces the barrier to entry for many people that might not be able to afford 32 eth now cons you have a much lower return on investment because this centralized uh, staking service will take a cut of the profits you're going to have commission fees and rewards which leads to a lower return on investment and higher potential for a slashing if the centralized staking service goes down furthermore it's centralized that means you won't have ownership over your tokens if one of these centralized staking services goes down or disappears you won't be able to retrieve your ETH last but not least is the liquid staking services uh, an example would be rocket pool uh, the uh, node operators can earn a lot higher staking rewards because they can charge fees from other people staking with their nodes and um, there's a lower requirement of eth so you can already start your node with 16 eth but you can also start staking on your own uh, with as little as 0.1 eth and last but not least and i think this is one of the biggest benefits is that your eth is not locked up away thanks to the tokenized aspect of staking which is introduced uh, by rocket pool in the form of our eth which is uh, esc20 token backed by staked eth which is locked up on ethereum 2.0 when comparing it with running your own validator such as um, there are smart contract risks that have to be taken into consideration um, our eth will probably be traded at a discount um, to eth um, to ensure liquidity Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about DeFi and Ethereum, then I highly recommend that you go over to my YouTube channel, Kieran Mulholland, your DeFi guide. With that said, I wish you a lot of fun with the remaining presentations during the EY Blockchain Summit 2020. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.